2022 hearing. Moved by Karen, seconded by Stuart, that the Committee of Adjustment for the Corporation of the Township of Seguin hereby convenes at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, July 13th, 2022. The Committee of Adjustment hereby convenes a public meeting as per the Planning Act. Applicants and the public can speak at the public meeting. When asked who wishes to speak to an applica application, please raise your hand and direct all comments through Yuri me. Overcott, join the meeting. Notice of the decisions will be sent to applicants and to the public if requested. Any person may appeal a decision or condition of approval within 20 days after the notice of decision. I will require a mover and a seconder for a resolution to, sorry for a resolution to accept the agenda for today's meeting as circulated. Moved by Stuart, seconded by Jim. You were out of that. The Committee yeah. of Adjustment for the Corporation of the Township of Seguin hereby approves the agenda for the July 13th, 2022 meeting. I will also require a mover and a seconder for resolution to accept the minutes of the previous meeting of the committee. Moved by Stuart, seconded by Jim, that the Committee of Adjustment for the Corporation of the Township of Seguin hereby accepts as read and circulated in these hands. The minutes of this last meeting that took place on Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. I now ask the Committee of Adjustment for disclosure of any pecuniary interests with respect to today's applications. None noted. Stuart? Point of order, Chair, uh, should we not have voted on that resolution? We go ahead with the meeting. Sorry. You are. Right, all in favor to go ahead. Unanimous, all in favor to accept the minutes. Unanimous. Thank you, Stuart. I will now ask the Committee of Adjustment for disclosure of any pecuniary interest with respect to today's applications. None noted. I will now ask the Secretary Treasurer to introduce the first application. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The purpose of minor variance application A-2022-0025-H for Kelly Hall and Sorensen Lewis is to permit a new boathouse and a minor addition to the cottage and is requesting a variance to permit a one and a half story two slip boathouse with a washer, um, as well as an increase in shoreline structure width, dock length and maximum lock coverage. Correspondence of opposition has been received from Mian Van Shake Monk and Dorian Monk, Al Fraser, as well as Nancy Cohen on behalf of Lake Joseph North Association. Correspondence in support of the application has been received from Mary McLean and Jane, James Dunlop. Thank you. Does anyone in attendance wish to speak to this application? Uh, Mr. Allen. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Ryan Allen. I am a registered professional planner with Planscape, um, Bracebridge, Ontario, 104 Kimberly Ave, P1L1Z8. I am the planning consultant that is representing um, Tim Sorensen and Stephanie Lewis. I have a presentation that I would like to share uh, with the committee. If I could go ahead and share my screen. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so as I mentioned, um, this is a minor variance application. Um, the subject property is for Birch Island on Lake Joseph. Here's a location map that identifies Birch Island and the subject property at the, the far southerly portion of the township. This is a, an enlarged area of Birch Island showing the subject property. Uh, you can see that there's an L-shaped jock that extends off the southern portion of the shoreline, um, and the existing development is well hidden by the, uh, the tree canopy, uh, and there's uh, some shoreline structures on the neighboring properties that are visible on Birch Island. 
The variance of actually the proposed development that's in front of committee today consists of removing the existing dock, constructing a new dock and one and a half story two slip boathouse and constructing multiple additions to the existing dwelling. Um, the following variances are proposed to permit a 11 by 11 meter, one and a half story two slip boathouse, to permit a dock width of 17.5 meters, to permit a dock length of 18.1 meters, to permit a lot coverage of 8.3% and to permit a washroom on the first floor of a boathouse. Um, from, in terms of the proposed site plan, this is the subject property and you can see the existing dwelling is in this light gray shade and there are um, multiple additions proposed to um, three sides of the building as well as a proposed new boathouse and dock complex. I would also note that there's an extensive amount of shoreline um, as the property consists of a point of land. And to that point, the, um, the township has a very interesting method, so to speak, on how to measure bylaw frontage. Um, in the case of uh, a non-island property, so a, a, a lot that's not a singular island, the first a line is drawn between where the two side lot lines intersect the shoreline. And then another line is drawn where eight meters is extended up one lot line, eight meters up the other lot line, and then those two points are connected. That forms the bylaw frontage. And I apologize that we have mismeasured the frontage on our site plan to be um, approximately uh, 49, 46 feet, where the, because of the, the, the challenging nature of the definition of frontage, bylaw frontage, the, the uh, staff has confirmed that the frontage is, is closer to 70 meters. I would also note that the actual frontage, if we mark our way around the shoreline, has 170, 197 meters of actual frontage. And if this, um, if this lot was a standalone island, the island frontage would be 103.7 meters. So it would be my submission that the, the bylaw frontage of this lot significantly up, underrepresents the true amount of frontage that is actually available. I would also note that you can see some shallow water depths in this uh, in the light tone at the bottom of this air photo, uh, which explains um, the reason for the existing over length non complying dock. <clears throat> and on that basis, uh, you can see the existing dock outlined here in red. That dock is um, 17.3 meters long. Oh, sorry, excuse me, 17.8 meters long. And the proposed addition is takes us to 18.05 meters. Um, the important thing to note is that the existing dock is a legal non-complying dock and has the, uh, the right to be replaced in the same location and extent. It has been recently damaged um, by some ice and is in need of repair. So even though the variance itself is from the 15 meter setback for dock length, the actual portion that doesn't comply. So this is the portion of new dock that extends beyond the length of the existing dock beyond the 15 meter setback is this small area that's highlighted in blue. Um, there's a proposed dock width increase. Uh, the maximum permitted is 17.3. The proposed amount is 17.5, an increase of 20 centimeters above the permitted maximum. And as noted, uh, with the difference between the existing dock length and the proposed dock length is 23 centimeters, uh, even though the variance itself is from 3.1 meters of additional dock length. Uh, the proposed uh, 11 by 11 uh, meter boathouse is shown here, and it does include a, a story um, above. This is the uh, elevations of the proposed boathouse. And you can see it is very much in keeping with uh, the character and style of other boathouses found on Lake Joseph. Uh, the internal portion of the boathouse uh, does include a proposed two-piece washroom. It's 1.8 square meters and you can see it outlined in red here. The bylaw itself does not explicitly prohibit washrooms within a boathouse. In a roundabout way, it only allows them within a sleeping cabin uh, thereby effectively uh, not allowing them in other structures. Um, the intention of having this washroom in the boathouse um, on the lower level, um, the upper level of the boathouse is, is seen by the, uh, the owners as a bit of a private suite, similar to um, a master, uh, master bedroom. And it would be preferred to have guests, uh, family and friends use the lower washroom uh, instead of using the washroom in the upper level of the boathouse or making their way back to the, uh, the cottage or worst case, you know, using the lake. 
There are, I uh, mentioned the three proposed additions to this uh, existing cottage. Uh, there is uh, one on the back and one on the front, one on the side, depending on what you view the front and side. The, the total dwelling area will be uh, 2,091 square meters, which is uh, just a shade over 3,000 square feet. I would note that the setbacks of all uh, the additions comply with the requirements of the zoning bylaw, as well as the height. In terms of the planning analysis, as I mentioned, the, the bylaw frontage significantly underrepresents the actual amount of frontage. And this lot would be permitted a, a boathouse with a one slip um, boathouse and, and one slip boat port. So the, the presence of a two slip boathouse is not significantly different um, in terms of the number of boats that can be accommodated on the lot. Uh, the only difference is where the location of the exterior wall is located. Lots that are having between 60 and 160 meters of frontage are permitted an 11 by 11 meter boathouse. Over 90 meters is permitted the one and a half story boathouse. I would note um, that the, uh, the committee has approved a similar approval um, for a three slip one and a half story bir uh, boathouse, which is actually on the same island as the subject property, Birch Island. It's number one Birch Island in the name of Elliot. It was in 2008 and the Elliot property is on the north end of Birch Island, whereas the Sorensen Lewis property is on the southern end. Of and I would note that the, uh, the same situation existed for that property. The bylaw frontage measurement was substantially different than the actual yeah. amount of frontage. And I would note in this, in this case, the application is for a two slip boathouse and not a three slip boathouse. We originally uh, put forward the, um, the proposal uh, to staff when we started our pre-consultation discussions with a, three, with a three slip boathouse. And through those discussions, um, you know, it was uh, decided that we should uh, reduce the, uh, the intensity of the size of the boathouse. And that's why you'll see uh, an application in front of you for the two slip. I, I mentioned earlier that the existing legal non-complying dock is permitted to remain. And effectively, the dock increase beyond the existing extent um, is only uh, 23 centimeters. The dock width increase is 20 centimeters, and the total dock width represents uh, just under 17% of the frontage. The official plan speaks to ensuring that shoreline structures do not accommodate more than 25% uh, of the frontage, so we are well below that requirement. Uh, this is a water access only property. It has no driveway, no parking area available for vehicles. All guests, all goods, all residents, materials, equipment must arrive by boat. Shoreline structures, including docks and boathouses, are critical um, for water access properties compared to mainland properties. And arguably, um, a water access property only functions uh, with sufficient dock and um, boathouse space. The Sorensons and Lewises would like to have the, uh, the two slip enclosed boathouse uh, to ensure their, uh, their boats are protected uh, completely by the elements. Oh, and one and a half story boathouses are permitted through the zoning bylaw on Lake Joseph. Uh, the proposed lot coverage of 8.3% represents uh, 40 square meters or just over uh, 400 square feet increase um, above the 7.5% maximum. And um, you know, arguably the, uh, the additions to the dwelling, um, which are well hidden behind an existing shoreline forested buffer are well screened and, and, uh, and, visually, and visually buffered from lakeside views. The additions to the dwelling comply with setbacks and height fully with the bylaw and the shoreline is naturally vegetated and well buffered. I did have a chance to review the, um, the, the letters of, of opposition um, respectfully, I, I disagree with a number of the comments that were made. Um, I believe that this application does meet the four tests of the Planning Act, uh, one which includes the test of being minor and it represents good planning. So while I appreciate that there are some concerns um, from the Lake Association and from, a, from some of the neighboring property owners, I have undertaken a, a thorough analysis of the application as a professional planner and have confirmed that the application represents good planning. I would be happy to um, answer any questions you have. Um, and I think the last point that I mentioned, sorry to, um, to digress, the existing lot is 1.3 acres in area and complies with the existing minimum requirements of the LRS zone. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, the committee may have. Thank you. 
before the I ask the committee, is there anyone else in attendance that wishes to speak to this application? Okay, do any of members of the committee have any questions in regards to this application? Terry? Thank you, Mr. Chair. To, uh, to the uh, owner's consultant, so you stated, uh, I'm having a little trouble just, this is a big ask, in my opinion, for a, a minor variance. And, and perhaps it does pass the test or perhaps it doesn't, um, in my opinion. But what I'm, I understand and I've looked at the site, I've been out and looked at it. Um, and I understand the existing dock is over length. Um, but yet you're asking for uh, permission to build a boathouse, yet there's sufficient depth for the boats in the boathouse without the added projection. So what is the benefit of extending the, the, the dock? Because it just increases the amount of of area you're you're asking for in this variance. So perhaps you could answer that to start with. Uh, sure, thank you to you, um, Member Fellner. The, if you have a look at the site plan drawing, and I could share my screen again if needed, the really the added, the added length of dock is simply to square off because of the way the new dock and boathouse are rotated along the shoreline. They don't follow the projection of the existing dock and to simply square off the end of the boat or to square off the end of the dock. So things um, are moving at right angles and not, um, and not irregular shaped angles. That's by and large, that's, that's the reason for the, the additional um, 23 centimeters of length. I think you may be missing the question. What I wondered was why is it necessary when you're rebuilding now with a boathouse, there's sufficient depth in the boathouse to, to comply. Why is it necessary to extend the sun dock protruded out over length when it's not necessary? The, uh, thank you, um, Member Fellner. The, the four tests of the Planning Act don't include whether something is necessary or not. The, the test is minor. And the, num the numerical extent associated with um, a, a requested variance is, is not the, the, the principal consideration. The, the principal consideration is the impact associated with that request. So in some cases, large, um, large variances may have no impact, but very small variances could have very large impacts. So it's, it, it's not to say that you know, just because there is a large, um, a large number um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not minor. The, the, from my perspective, um, I view um, the four tests as whether or not the impact associated with the additional um, length, the 23 centimeters of length would be minor or not. Um, and, and I don't believe that 23 centimeters of dock length um, you know, would, would provide you know, the appearance of additional built form, impact navigation, um, have any of those, you know, adverse impacts on neighboring property owners or users of the lake? Hmm. Well, okay. Not so sure that I agree with that. The um, so, and you've given fairly detailed plans for the boathouse, but the proposed additions to the cottage are pretty sketchy. Is that? Are they finalized or? Uh, thank you uh, to you, um, Member Fellner. I have not seen detailed um, design plans of the interior of the dwelling. Um, I would note that a zoning bylaw doesn't have the ability to regulate the interior of a dwelling. Um, what I can confirm though, is that the, the proposed additions comply with uh, the required setbacks and the required height. Um, some additional coverage is required in order to construct the additions plus the proposed boathouse. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, before we continue, Mr. Block, could I just ask you to uh, mute your computer? Mute if it. possible, please. Just the you Thank you. Chair Greg, uh, can I ask a question? Uh, yes, please, Mr. Beatty. So my question would be through you to the planner uh, regarding the uh, proposed water frontage and the increase from 70 meters to, I think it was 101 or 110 meters. I understand how you arrived at that calculation, but sort of under what principle does it, are you allowed to um, sort of subjectively look at, at a water frontage from that perspective as opposed to uh, the perspective of the bylaws? Or was that directed to uh, staff planner or? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, the applicant's uh, planner, sorry. Uh, thank you to you, Member Beattie. The, the way in which the, the current zoning bylaw uh, measures frontage is unlike any other um, bylaw that I have come across working in, in waterfront uh, development for a number of years. Um, most municipalities measure it between the side lot lines and, and don't extend a distance back on shore and measure the, uh, the distance between that. So from my perspective, it's a very strange and convoluted um, way to measure frontage today under the current bylaw. And, and it's not to say that we're, we're proposing to recognize the, the, the frontage of this lot to be the 103 meters as the, the diagonal measurement that I showed on my earlier figure. It's, it's as justification to provide for the one and a half story boathouse, the 11 by 11 um, square meter boathouse, as well as the um, as well as the additional dock width or the the percentage of, of of dock width that's permitted with that amount of frontage. So we haven't we, we're not defining the frontage to be 103 meters. The bylaw frontage will stay 70 meters. That that will not change. It's it's the it's the planning justification, the rationale and analysis that is going into looking at whether or not there is justification to consider a greater amount of development, considering how punitive the current bylaw measures the frontage of this lot, which has almost 200 meters of actual shoreline. So I understand your response, but uh, you know whether, whether it's 101, 103, or whatever figure you choose, you want, you want to increase it beyond, subjectively increase it beyond the 70 meter, um, otherwise you would be limited uh, to the one boathouse, one uh, one story uh, boathouse, one slip, uh, and perhaps a, a boat port, uh, but you wouldn't wouldn't uh, be allowed through, in my opinion, minor variants to put the second floor on the boathouse. Just uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Terry. You had a question. Yeah, again, to review the chair, I think, you know, um, Mr. Beatty sort of hit on the question, the, you know, it doesn't really matter how bizarre the form of measurement is uh, to, uh, with respect to uh, Mr. Allen, it, that, that particular part was put in the zoning bylaw for a reason. Um, now, in my, so you're in effect asking us as a committee of adjustment to make a decision on changing the zoning bylaw to allow something on the property that that normally wouldn't be allowed, and and for that for that fact, I think my opinion is that, that would have been more appropriately addressed as a rezoning issue, and that's where my level of comfort with this whole application evaporates. So um, I appreciate your opinion, but the zoning bylaw is the zoning bylaw. And if you want relief, to me, it isn't a matter of a couple of meters. It's a matter of 20 meters. It's, it's a big ask with the increased area. Nah. 
I, I just, I just don't think it's minor. Mr. Allen, uh, to reply through you, Member Fellner, or to you, Member Fellner, maybe I could explain why the variance was submitted, and and not a different type of application. I mentioned that number one, Birch Island in 2019, 2018, excuse me, a minor variance application was approved for effectively the same type of issue. There was a bylaw frontage measurement that, that did not provide enough um, frontage measurement, frontage distance to allow for a three slip, one and a half story boathouse. So a minor variance was approved by the committee of adjustment um, to allow the three slip, one and a half story boathouse that proceeded through a minor variance application as well as our pre-consultation with staff um, prior to submitting the application. Um, it was uh, discussed and agreed that this application could proceed um, via minor variance. There's also a supportive um, staff report with the supportive recommendation attached to your agenda package. Any other members of the committee have any comments or questions? <clears throat> Uh, in regards to, I do, Mr. Allen, but, uh, and it kind of uh, dovetails on yours, Jim, the, the 103 meters measurement going diagonal is for a standalone island. I understand the concept of that, but it, it really isn't relevant to this specific because it is a subdivided island. So I, I do, un do appreciate the the, the principle of the application based on the total frontage of the property, but the bylaw as it is written is specific to 70 meters or to the, it, you're currently at 70 meters under the current bylaw. And to Terry's point, that is a substantial increase that we're looking to allow. We're looking in excess of 22% over what is allowed by the bylaw. And uh, I also am not comfortable with it as a minor variance. It may very well have merit as a uh, rezoning through council, but I think that the ask is too big, uh, in my opinion, for the committee of adjustment. Taylor. I'd just like uh, to note, and um, sorry to walk into this conversation, but. The, the one test is what is the intent of the zoning bylaw? So I, I, I know that committee is, is quite focused on 70 meters being a firm cap. And that is, but it's what is the intent of the bylaw? And uh, Mr. Allen, sketch, if you look at it in the diagonal measurement, which is common in other water municipalities, is how does that interact with this lot and this situation? Uh, that is how the other property on Birch Island, which received a variance of 43 meters is also interpreted as how does this variance and how does this rule interact with this actual site and going back to what is what is the impact so I just wanted to note that that 70 meters it, it's it's not a firm cap that cannot be considered it should be considered in the context of the site and how it interacts uh, with the, the greater surrounding area and both Taylor and Mr. Allen, I'm not saying that this application is not without merit on, in regards to the property. I'm just saying, in my opinion, this, is, this would qualify or should, would be more of a rezoning application. Because if you're looking to make that kind of an increase to a bylaw that has been put in place by council, either A, council should approve the amendment to it, or the revision of it, or you may very well have very valid points, Mr. Allen, in regards to the measurement of that property and how it's measured against other waterfront properties uh, around the province. But then that is something that should be taken to council. They should be looking at revising the bylaw then. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Any members of the public? Or any other members of the committee? 
Then I require a mover and a seconder for the re resolution to bring forward this application. Oh, well, sorry, Mr. Allen. Sorry, Mr. Um, Mr. LG had his hand raised. So I was just trying to flag that up. Uh, someone had their hand up in the audience, so that was Ryan. Um, so uh, just so committee um, appreciates the. Um, uh, Tim and Stephanie have a desire to uh, undertake the, they have a contractor lined up and a, a desire to undertake the additions to the cottage, um, uh, reconstruct the dock and, and boathouse this fall. So they have, you know, there's a very strong uh, desire to maintain that, that construction timeline. So you know, they are, they are willing, um, I've kind of been monitoring the phone through the meeting, they're willing to consider um, modifications to this application in order to address committee's concerns. If there is a concern related to, you know, the, the additional um, dock length, uh, we would be amenable to, to remove that variance from, from the request. Um, the same thing with the additional dock width. And, and if, if the committee um, uh, can appreciate the need to have, you know, enclosed, two enclosed boat slips, I understand they would also be willing to forego the upper level of the boathouse and proceed with simply a single story, 11 by 11 um, meter boathouse and the increased lot coverage. If the committee was able to advance the application today on that basis, I think the owners would be, would be quite happy in order to maintain their construction um, time schedule. Taylor? Just looking at the um, at the variance, um, we to do this we need a, a mover and a seconder to bring forward an amendment to it. And we'll just have to be very clear that we are crossing out and modifying the correct parts, so committee is aware of what is being considered. So, mover and a seconder to consider the amendment. Then we amend the variance as Mr. Allen just described. And then there could be a vote on that, on whether that better uh, satisfies committee. Well, I, just in regards to that, Mr. Allen, I appreciate that consideration and, and uh, both by you and the applicants. Uh, the issue is, the next issue is gonna be the washroom and a boathouse. Uh, it's against the bylaw. We would be happy to sacrifice the washroom as well if, they, if this would satisfy the committee. Okay. Terry? Just a, just a suggestion uh, to Mr. Allen and uh, Sorensen. This committee meets once a, once a month. Uh, you know, we could, uh, you could also su suggest to defer it for a month and come back with with a new proposal if that's easier um i, I, I appreciate staffs sorry th th to you uh member Fellner. i appreciate um the, the amount of time staff has uh, been very generous uh with assisting with this application if if we can if we can come to an agreement at today's meeting to address the concerns of the committee and advance the proposal I think we've kind of addressed the concerns raised by the Lake Association and other neighbors and, and addressed concerns by the committee. And I think that's a, it's a win for everyone around the table. So I would, I would be hopeful if, if, we, if we could, or if there are members that are willing to consider making a modification today and avoid a deferral, um, you can avoid another, uh, you can avoid seeing me again and another application on a future meeting. Fair enough. Terry? Pardon me? Terry, do you have a position? Would you prefer, are you no, willing I, to- No, I'm fine with whatever the applicant wishes, is, is, I, I'm fine with it. I was just giving them the option if it was easier for them that way. Okay. Um, I think Taylor, I think that, uh, um, can you list, can you go through the amendments that would be required to bring it into compliance as the bylaw sits now? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm going to look at Ryan to confirm that I captured what he said, but 
uh, the variance, and I'm just looking at my table, Ryan, it'd be permit a one story two slip boathouse. Uh, did you omit the second one of a shoreline width of 0.2 meters? Was that still uh, yes. a So a reduction of the dock width? Yes. To remove that variance. So remove that. Did you remove the dock length variance as well? There are some shallow water depths. Um, they would like it for swimming and to square the dock off. But if absolutely, if, if the committee sees that as needed, yes. Okay. Uh, lot coverage, I imagine, would stay the same. Um, yes, that's something that is required for the area of the boathouse and the dwelling additions, plus the existing dwelling combined. And you mentioned the washroom in the boathouse could be uh, omitted as well? Correct. Okay, I think we have a clear idea of what we could do if there was a, a motion to amend this, uh, if the Secretary Treasurer understands. Just want to make sure that I don't speak. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair and Taylor. Um, I can cross out the ones uh, that Taylor just mentioned we're getting rid of. Um, so my understanding would be a if, if we have a motion, um, a one-story uh, two-slip boathouse um, and then lot coverage. So, Mr. Chair, if, if that's the case, we would just need someone to bring forward a motion for those amendments, and we would need a seconder, and then committee would vote on the amendments, and then we would bring forward the resolution um, as amended, and then we would have a second vote for that. So we are removing then the shoreline structure width, correct? Correct. We are removing, uh, we are going to deal with the dock length, but the dock length will not, it will be re require a 2.82 uh, meter variance because there is the, the current dock is 17.82. So to bring it into compliance, there has to be an amendment to that. Am I right, Taylor? No, technically, if it's going to stay the same length, uh, it would be legal non-complying. I believe I heard Mr. Allen note that if they can get that 23 meters, so as worded, that would be preferable. But uh, so I think that's something that committee might have to, to uh, yeah. consider. So I th but I think in fairness, to simplify this process and move this application through for you, Mr. Allen, we're going to remove the requested variance in regards to the dock length. Yes. Okay. Uh, we will retain the maximum lot coverage, even though it'll be slightly less, it'll be minimally less yes. from seven and a half to 8.3, yes. leaving a variance of 0.8%. And that'll be a plus or minus, or it'll be a minus actually from that. Yes when we take out the smaller deck. And we are going to change the, now, is it the same section for the boathouse, for a one story, two slip boathouse? And if, if that is required under the bylaw, we in fact do, need, do not need a variance for it. That can be, that application can just be made, can it not tell? No, it, it, we still need a variance there because uh, the bylaw reads that one of the slips would have to be a boat port. So uh, leaving it as one, permit a one story, two slip boathouse to that same section would be the correct way to do it. Got it. Okay. And oh, excuse me, um, Mr. Chair. Yes, you, Mr. You didn't mention the, um, the elimination of the washroom on the lower level of the boathouse. I did that right. That oh, was sorry. the first one that Excuse went. Excuse me. <laughs> that was the first one that went, Mr. Allen. Okay. Then, Jim? Are you muted, Jim? Thank you. Uh, I, I presume you're going to uh, about to call for a motion. I just want to be clear in my own mind what we end up voting on. So this is a one one story boathouse. The two slip width would take the place of one slip 
plus one boat port. So in a sense, that would be no wider than is currently permitted under the existing bylaw. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Terry, you had a question or a comment? No, I was gonna move the amendment. <laughs> okay. Then I'll require a mover and a seconder for the resolution to bring forward the, bring forward this application. Moved by Jim, seconded by Stuart. That the Committee of Adjustment hereby approves variance oh, application. Sorry, Mr. Chair, we just need a vote on the amendment. So we just need, um, if Terry's motioning it, we just need a seconder on that amendment. And then we just need a vote um, to, ex to either carry that amendment or defeat the amendment and go back to the original. Got it. I apologize. No, that's well, The okay. amendment is to amend section 4.2.1, table 4.4, 70 meters of frontage. Maximum permitted is a one story, one slip, one boat port boathouse. Proposed is a one story, two slip boathouse. Variance required a one story, two slip boathouse. The other amendment is six, bylaw section 6.3, table 6.3, maximum lot coverage. Maximum permitted is 7.5%, proposed is 8.3%. Variance required is 0.8%. All those in favor? Okay, so the <clears throat> amendment has been carried and now you can read out the, uh, the, the resolution. Thank you. Thank you for taking <laughs> care of me here. No problem. That the, that the Committee of Adjustment hereby approves variance application A2022-0025 dash H to permit a new boathouse and a minor addition to the cottage on the subject property. The proposed boathouse is replacing an existing dock in a similar location. Variances are required to the following sections of the zoning bylaw 2006-125. Bylaw section 4.28.1, table 4.4, 70 meters of frontage. Maximum permitted on that is a one story, one slip, one boat, port boathouse. Proposed is a one-story, two-slip boathouse, requiring a variance of a one-story, two-slip boathouse. Also, uh, table 6.3, maximum lot coverage. Uh, maximum permitted is 7.5%. Proposed is 8.3%. The variance required is 0.8%. All those in favor. Oh, sorry, sorry, Mr. Chair, just subject to conditions. I believe it carries on the second page. Subject to the conditions that the owner applies for and obtains a permit for the cottage and the boathouse within two years of the date of decision of the Committee of Adjustment. And the extent of the variance will be generally limited to what is shown on the sketch plan submitted in the application. All those in favor. Carried. Oh, we yeah. got there. Hey, thank you very much, committee. Um, uh, Tim and Stephanie will be very happy to beat their construction timelines. While we didn't come up for everything we asked for, we appreciate your consideration and avoiding the deferral. Um, so uh, thank you for your time. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay. Now I'll ask the secretary treasurer to introduce the next application. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the purpose of minor variance application number A-2022-0026F for pool is to construct a single story detached garage requesting a variance for an increase in maximum lot coverage and a reduced exterior side yard setback. No formal correspondence was received. Does anyone in attendance wish to speak to this application? Uh, Mr. Graham? Um, uh, good afternoon. It, it's actually Graham Poole. So, oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Poole. That, that's all good. I know it's showing just my first name. Um, I, uh, I'm here in attendance as the, as the property owner and, and along with my wife, uh, submitted the minor variance application. Um, yeah, I've had extensive, uh, communication with, 
with staff uh, over the last six months on this application and uh, have seen the, uh, the recommendation report uh, and appreciate and uh, understand and, and support the, the staff recommendations uh, in, in that. Thank you. Anyone else in attendance wish to speak to this application? Any committee members have any comments or questions in regards to this application? Then I require a mover and a seconder for the resolution to bring forward this application. Moved by Terry, seconded by Karen. That the Committee of Adjustment hereby approves variance application A 2022-0026-F to construct a single story detached garage, 133 square meters. On the subject lands and requires variance to the following sections of zoning bylaw 2006-125. Bylaw section 10.3, table 10.2, minimum exterior side yard setback. Bylaw requirement is 10 meters, proposed is 1.2 meters. Re variance required is 8.8 .8 meters. Section 10.3, table 10.2, maximum lot coverage. Bylaw allows 5%, proposed is 5.8, requiring a variance of 0.8%. Subject to the following conditions. The extent of the variance will generally conform to that shown on the sketch plan submitted in the application, and that the owner applies for and obtains a building permit for the new garage within two years of the date of decision of the Committee of Adjustment. All those in favor? Carried unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Poulos. So the application has been approved. You will get a letter in the next few days notifying you of the same and the 20 day appeal period now starts. Uh, thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. I'll now ask the secretary treasurer to introduce the next application. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the purpose of minor variance application number A-2022-0027-C for Cohen and Obercott is to permit the construction of a deck addition, requesting a variance for an increase in maximum lot coverage within the first 60 meters of the shoreline. No formal correspondence was received. Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak to this application? Mr. Cowan, I'm not able to hear you, sir. Is that better? Hear me That's now? perfect. Okay, perfect. Uh, thanks for the time today. Uh, just quickly, uh, I'm the owner. Um, and my fiance is on the call as well, Keely Overcott. Um, you know, let us know if any questions, but we do feel it is quite minor. We submitted our our, applica our application for the building permit originally and found out through zoning um, that we were about 15 square meters above the first 60 meter lot allowance, which we were not aware of. So we, you know, the best place to take that away was from, was from the deck, the lake facing deck that went across the cottage. Um, after getting the plans, it got approved and everything, but after getting the plans, we do miss that extra 15 by eight times 10 piece of the dock. You know, it, we lost the patio door from the master to the deck and a lot of that usability on the deck. So hoping we could put that back. Um, we are well below the overall um, lot coverage at 6.84% percent this would put us by extending the deck back would put us at 8.6 percent in the first 60 meter lot coverage above the eight percent so that's what we're requesting the variance for um, I think in the in the report it shows you know we are well back from the water you know lots of vegetation not not disrupting views or anything like that so um, yeah that's kind of what we're asking for here today okay thank you any of the committee members have any questions or comments then I'll require a mover and a seconder for the resolution to bring forward this application. Moved by Stuart, seconded by Jim. That the Committee of Adjustment hereby approves variance application A 2022-0027-C to construct a 14.55 square meter deck addition to the subject lands and request variance to the following section of the zoning bylaw 2006-125. Bylaw section 6.3, table 6.3, maximum permitted lot coverage within 60 meters. Maximum permitted is 8%, proposed is 8.7%, requiring a variance of 0.7%, subject to the following conditions. The extent of the variance will generally conform to that shown on the sketch plan submitted in the application. 
that the owner applies for and obtains a building permit for the deck addition within two years of the date of the decision of the Committee of Adjustment. All those in favor? Carried unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. The application has been approved. You'll get a letter in the next few days notifying you of the same and the 20 day appeal period now starts. Thanks everyone for your time. Thank you. I now ask the secretary treasurer to introduce the next application. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the uh, purpose of minor variance application number A-2022-0028 dash C block is to permit the construction of a detached garage, requesting a variance for an increase in both maximum lot coverage for the entire subject lands, as well as maximum lot coverage within the first 60 meters of the shoreline. Correspondence in support of the application was received from Nancy and Peter um, Reeker and Noel and Marnie Hutchinson. Is there anyone in attendance in attendance that wish to speak to this application. Mr. Block. Yes, hi, uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to uh, say something on this. This is my first time doing such a thing. And um, yeah, we built this cottage in 205 and the lots are a little bit smaller here on this uh, lane, on Alex Lane. And um, we always had the thought maybe we'd be here full time and it came to fruition. We've been here three years and uh, the first time I submitted for the permit, I miscalculated the, uh, the lot coverage. And um, <clears throat> so that's why the variance is being requested. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was okay being seasonal, not having garage, but now full time, it's, uh, it's pretty key. <laughs> between uh, you know, a couple of toys and a tractor and a lawnmower. But um, yeah, I'm uh, hoping that uh, something could happen here. That'd be awesome. And also that the whole process, when I built this cottage and this application for this uh, garage with the township has been really, really good. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Is there anyone else in attendance wishes to speak to this? Any members of the committee wish to speak to this resolution or this resolution or this application? Okay. Then I require a movement or seconder for the resolution to bring forward this application. Moved by Karen, seconded by Terry. That the Committee of Adjustment hereby approves variance application A2022-0028 dash C to construct a 65.4 square meter single story detached garage on the subject lands and request variance to the following sections of zoning bylaw 2006-125. Bylaw section 6.3, table 6.3, maximum lot coverage, maximum permitted is 8.0%, proposed is 10%, requiring a variance of 2%. Also bylaw section 6.3, table 6.3, maximum lot coverage within 60 meters. Maximum permitted is 8%, proposed is 11.7%. The variance required is 3.7%, subject to the following conditions. That the owner applies for and obtains a building permit for the new garage within two years of the date of decision of the committee of adjustment. And the extent of the variance will generally conform to that shown on the sketch plan submitted in the application. All those in favor? Passed unanimous. Thank you. So the application has been approved. You'll get a letter in the next few days notifying you of the decision and the 20 day appeal, per, uh, appeal period now starts. Thank you. Thank you, committee. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. I will now ask the Secretary Treasurer to introduce the final application. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the purpose of the final application, minor variance application number A 2022 0029-C for coal is to reconstruct a cottage in a new location, requesting variance for a decrease in front yard setback. Correspondence in support of the application was received from Susan and Terry Cole and George uh, Duffield.
Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak to this application? Hi, Mr. Mr. Chair, Duffy? Kelly here from Northern yeah. Shield. Um, good afternoon. There's a few of us here. We're um, happy to answer any questions that the committee members might have um, on the application and uh, the reasoning for the submission. Mr. Duffield, you had indicated you would like to speak. Yes, please, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm a resident of uh, Isabella Lake and my family has been on the lake since the 1940s. Um, the subject property is one that was built in the late 1930s or early 1940s. I, I wasn't old enough to know at that time exactly when it was built. <laughs> I'm getting close to it, but not quite. Um, <laughs> So I've known I've known uh, Brian Cole since he was born, and uh, and have uh, watched him grow into the person that he is, and also have been with him through the tremendous accident that he had that resulted in a traumatic brain injury. Um, so while I'm not here to dispute or or uh, to challenge the the committee in any way, I would ask that you consider this application also as a health and safety, um, or consider the aspect as a health and safety issue, because um, even a person with a, a disability deserves to be accommodated in some way. And this would make a huge difference for Brian to be able to enjoy his, uh, his time on Lake Isabella or Isabella Lake. Uh, us old timers always called it Lake Isabella. Sorry about that. Um, it's, it's, uh, I realize it's, it's uh, a variance and, and that it's tricky, but he's not, the, the change is not going to affect any other cottager. Uh, he's, not, uh, he's not next to any structures. He's got his own area on the island. And it's, um, it's, it's something that would be welcomed by everyone to know that Brian would be safer to have variance approved and be able to live on uh, at the cottage when he can. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, committee. Thank you, Mr. Duffield. Uh, is there anyone else in attendance that would like to speak to the application? Do any committee members have any comments or questions? Jim? Yeah, I, I, I visited the property and, and uh, visited with, uh, with the Coles, um, and I can appreciate the, the challenge. Uh, the, uh, the cottage that they're proposing is, is really very modest. We're looking at somewhere around 700 square foot, which is not much more than, a, you know, a large bunkie. Uh, and the existing cottage, as I understand it, would be, would be torn down. Um, it's well treated, uh, certainly uh, from the vantage point of the water, um, and all throughout the area where the cottage or this this large bunkie, if you will, would be proposed to be built. There, there is a a sort of manual uh, lift on the property, but it's it's not electronic, and I think it would be a challenge for an individual of substantial weight to actually move up and down on, on this on this lift. I, I look, you know, considered the byline and, and I, I, I understand the, uh, the setback requirement and, and the problems that can ensue when there are special circumstances, but I, I and, and I don't have a solution, Mr. Chair, uh, but it, it, it behooves the committee if, if there was one to, and I'm sure staff have considered it, but if there was um, an opportunity to uh, to make it a little easier uh, for them uh, to to put up a new what, what essentially is a is a new building um, with with some sort of a variance, um, I'm sure it would go a long ways. Thanks. Any other committee members? Terry. So, it, is the variance process the appropriate process for this? I mean, 
somehow we have to collectively find a solution here. And uh, to Mr. Beatty's point, um, it's it's a modest request, um, in my opinion, but it doesn't meet the test for a minor variance. So respectfully, is this something that the family should bring to council to, to, so we can find a solution uh, for Mr. Cole? I'm just putting it out there, Taylor. I don't know. Uh, Sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, sorry, I thought you were uh, just extremely amusing. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I agree that this isn't suitable as a, a minor variance. I, uh, the way it's currently proposed uh, in the pre-consultation and on the site visit, I noted if, if there's other, any other way they could look at some type of motorized uh, stair access or seek variances to uh, maybe rear yards or internal side yards to get a better building envelope elsewhere on the site. But the 20 meter setback is an official plan policy. So that's firmly embedded in many of Seguin's documents. Um, a, an official plan amendment for an application like this would be a little uh, unprecedented in the sense that it's, it's quite a big process for for what the, the request at hand is, but I do believe if anything is being asked, that would be the process, but that, as I noted, it's not to be taken lightly. Um, if they wanted, if a decision wanted to be deferred for them to consider if there was any other setbacks that could be reduced or any other means of uh, reducing the hardship while, while staying out of the, the 20 meter setback, that it, maybe that is something that could be considered. Jim? Uh, through you, uh, Chairman Greg, and, uh, um, Taylor, is, is it possible to, there is, there are two other buildings on the property, I believe one, one is a bunkie, and the other one that is close, a little bit in, closer to the waterfront than actual the post structure, and it is, I believe, a pump house or, or uh, some sort of a, a storage type shed. It, would it be inconceivable to look at an addition on to that particular building of 700 square feet or uh, and and make that the residence? I, th I think the from my perspective anyway, yes, there is the distance from from the water and I understand that. But this is this is a very modest building. As I say, you can build a bunkie at 500 square feet and I, I think it doesn't become a cottage until it's success from that. You're, you're looking at a very modest structure and whether we can look at an opportunity to change the name of the of the structure from a cottage to a bunkie, uh, but maybe you you need the main cottage to have a bunkie. I, I, it's it's worthwhile exploring. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, the, I believe the pump, pump houses are permitted in the front yard setback, so that is explicitly uh, detailed in our zoning bio that they essentially get uh, by their nature just like docks or gazebos for that nature, they're allowed in that 20 meter setback. The other building to the uh, right in the sketch within the 20 meter setback, we weren't able to confirm the legality of that structure. I'm not saying it's illegal. I just don't know if it is legal, but bunkies are also supposed to be set back 20 meters from the shoreline as well. Um, I wouldn't encourage committee to getting into a game of changing the name or or anything of that nature, I think that is a, isn't really the intent of the zoning bylaw. I think what has to be considered is either the request at hand or if it would be tabled for any other reason. Terry? Perhaps um, I can suggest a solution or a, a way forward. Please. Um, I, I would like to see if the family, if the applicant would be amenable to defer this. Um, the reason for the defer is I would like to, I didn't get an opportunity to visit this site. I would like to get the opportunity to, to visit it and I wanna uh, bring some staff along with me and see if there's uh, a way forward here. Um, 
I'd like to be able to propose a solution for this, but I, I really don't think that the minor variance um, route is, is really uh, the proper one. And I, I don't think, I don't think we're gonna get a satisfactory conclusion trying to pursue that at the moment. So I'm just gonna ask the, the, the uh, applicant if they consider a deferral. I, I, I don't know what your construction sort of schedule looks like or plans or, or uh, you know, what you wanna do, but. Okay, go ahead, Kevin. Um, thank you, Committee Fellner. So I can shed some light on that. Um, we wondered if uh, if a deferral might come up uh, for various reasons. Um, right now, our construction schedule, just with it being already uh, mid-July, we're actually planning on doing the demolition and a lot of the materials getting to site and enclosing in the shell, hopefully by October. With this being a water access only, um, it's really a condensed construction schedule. We deal with a lot of modularized systems and wall panels, so we'll be doing doing a lot of things off site and then bringing them into the island kind of ready to install. Um, so we want to get it done as quick as possible, unfortunately or fortunately for the calls, and really get it closed in by the time the weather turns in October and the island is no longer accessible. Um, also key point just with the existing cottage right now, it's kind of nearing that end of life span. So they're kind of at a bit of a, a pass in the road right now. Do we put some money into the cottage to get it through another season? Or do we, you know, we push ahead with the demolition and get things ready for the new build? The real, the goal here of this whole proposed project is to really just redevelop some of the key buildings and do that shift and shuffle to make it more accessible for Brian. Um, if if you haven't been to the island, like we did supply some photos as well, just showing the number of stairs right now to get up to the existing cottage area. Um, it is quite extensive. It's a hike. Um, I was had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Beatty out there on the weekend and we kind of walked around the island. Um, we also did look at kind of the area over to the to the right of the proposed structure. It's a little flatter. Um, however, it gets into multiple um, kind of setbacks just with the way that the point kind of comes to the to the end. Um, so we're open to suggestions and, and thank you for your comments, but uh, we feel kind of compressing that floor plan down to that 760 main floor size and getting all of the needs for the family to really enjoy that three season cottage. This is um, the optimal position for the cottage to be in. Thank you. Kelly, I think the, the, the committee is in agreement that we're, we, we would like to come up with a solution to uh, assist, uh, but to Terry's point, the official bylaw says 20, and we're being asked to, as a committee of adjustment, as a minor variance, to bring it down to 10. And I think it's a dangerous precedent for the committee of adjustment to be stepping into. Uh, I do agree with, I, I would personally think that this would be a, uh, a zoning application that would have to go before council. But if we defer for a month, and maybe put our collective heads together at the site that we can come up with some form of an amendment that uh, doesn't violate the intent of the committee of adjustment, but can look to do the right thing in regards to this very specific application. Because the problem is, as Terry mentions, this can set a very bad precedent. And I, I personally, as a chair, think it is outside the scope of the Committee of Adjustments to, you know, I don't believe going against the official plan of the township is minor in any aspect. I, I think that we have to uh, work within the intent of that bylaw. So I think that if we can, my suggestion as well supports Terry's to recommend a deferral I think that when you're looking at your timelines, when you're talking about demolition and then starting construction, the only thing that will happen by a one month deferral, uh, the demolition can be put at the end. There can be a condition put into the building permit that that can be done at the end. It doesn't have to be done up front, uh, which happens quite often when people are redeveloping their properties. So I think that the one month deferral might be the best process in this, but it's, it's your, as the applicant, uh, your choice.
Thank you. I was I meant to ask too as well uh, what uh, timeline the deferral might come with, and if we could maybe set a meeting date that works for the coals and everyone to get out there. I know it's a little bit of a challenge being water access only, but um, Nikki, Brian, um, if you guys want to maybe take them up on that, I think it might be helpful getting everyone to site to see the challenges and see the area that we staked off. Uh, give the rest of the committee a, ch a chance like uh, Mr. Beatty had to see, you know, just how the cottages and the structures interact on the property and, and the nature on the lake. So I think um, just reading my messages here, I think Nikki and Brian, you're in agreement. We'll go ahead for that and accept, uh, accept the meeting request and get everyone there to uh, explain the situation a little bit better. And I think as Terry says about with taking staff as well as Terry's representation from council, I think we can have the discussion out there whether there is, uh, whether it is possibly within the scope of the committee of adjustments or whether reasonably the application should be made to council for rezoning. Not speaking for you, Terry, would you agree with that? Uh, I, th I think there's some possible solutions here that need to be investigated. And I yeah. think, you know, um, you know, with the ultimate goal to let's let's get something proper figured out so this gentleman can enjoy his property. And uh, I'm, I'm available pretty much every day next week. So more than happy to jump on this. And jump in, staff will have to uh, investigate because this, if quorum is there, this will be an official meeting of the committee of adjustment. So we'll just have to make sure that there are no additional uh, notice requirements. Uh, this is a little bit of um, uh, new new turf, I, I would say. So we'll just have to ensure okay. all the rules are followed accordingly. Yeah. Okay. And, and I appreciate yeah. that because it's a unique application, and yep. we appreciate it's a unique application, and we 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 support the intent of it, but we have to work within what uh, our abilities are under the uh, the committee. No, and you know what, thank you and thank you on behalf of the Coles for even, you know, suggesting to take a look at it as a new, unique situation. We understand that. I think uh, we understand that accommodations and concessions uh, need to be made sometimes and we appreciate that you're open to finding a solution. That's obviously step one, right? Just figure out what avenues are available. So let's uh, set a date where we can all meet and then hopefully we can keep things moving along. And I do appreciate that option of having the demolition follow at the, the tail end of the construction. I think that would really help as well, um, allowing the Coles to appreciate the property and use it fully this season and then take it down even in the spring next year once construction is complete. So thank you. And Kelly, not to, not to put anybody on the hook at the town. That's only me as a lay person. I'm certainly not speaking for the building department or, or for the planning department in regards to that. That's just me as a lay person, not even as the chair of the committee. Understood. Well, thank you. We, we appreciate even that that may be a possibility. Okay. Uh, uh, do we need secretary treasurer? Do we need an application to, or do we need a motion to defer? You got it, Mr. Chair. So a motion to defer, go. and then we need a seconder, <laughs> and then a vote. <laughs> I will require a mover and a seconder to defer this application. Moved by Terry, seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Passed unanimous. Taylor, then I would, I would think that. Uh, in regards to the process and protocol, we should wait as a committee, we should wait to hear from you in regards to this being a possible quorum and what process uh, we would look to follow before we book a date to go out as a group. Yeah, I'll allow Lauren and myself to uh, investigate uh, how, how that works because if there is quorum, we do have to, uh, I'm sure, uh, make note of it or not that it's an official meeting. I'm not sure if notice is required, I hope not, but. Uh, let's we can figure that out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'll now ask the Committee of Adjustment if there's any other business. Okay. Then I'll require a mover and a seconder for resolution to adjourn the July 13th, 2022 Committee of Adjustment hearing. Moved by Stuart, seconded by Terry. 
that the Committee of Adjustment hereby, hereby approves, sorry, that the Committee of Adjustment for the Corporation of the Township of Seaman does hereby adjourn this meeting at 5.15 p.m. on Wednesday, July 13th, 2022. The committee will hold its next hearing at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, August 10th, 2022, or at the call of the chair, unless the secretary treasurer has not received complete applications for committee and consideration. All those in favor? The meeting is over, thank you. <laughs>